Design Development Studio Ape Unit. In the past, he has realized app and web app projects for companies like Sony, Volkswagen, and others. He is an IAP lead and the iExpands coordinator. And with his talk, an introductory, an introduction and guide to Eternity's expansion, it's Emil Wagner. Round of applause for Sir Emil. Hey, hi. Um, I'm Emil. Uh, in the beginning, when the core protocol development started, I think uh, Emin got me in and asked um, we should also start to think a little bit about the application layer. And um, there, then we started to prototype some stuff and so on. And then as more as the core protocol involved, we were seeing that um, a coordination, how it works for the uh, core protocol or project management like this and processes don't work very well for the application layer because you have naturally a lot of different teams that are trying to build lots of different stuff and we need um, also different uh, processes to um, manage this. Um, you could also say maybe okay they all build their own stuff but um, then you have the big problem that the user experience gets really really bad if the stuff doesn't fit together and uh, apps communicate not with each other and um, users that are onboarded in the eternity ecosystem with one application are not able to use another one and all these things so um, we said um, what do we want to have? We want to have a tool for coordination. We want to have a, a signaling and visibility where the teams are working on and what could be a common standard. And of course, we want all these uh, different pieces uh, to fit together. And um, so what came up with together with Sasha Hanse, who I don't know, he's here, doesn't seem so, <laughs> is um, expansions <laughs> <laughs> so that is um, a repository on github where we collect standards common best practices and um, also some meta guidelines about our processes uh, or not our the processes <laughs> and um, I today I would just want to go to give an overview what is already there, what already teams are working on, and also what a little wish list that we collected in the um, forum and also in the last meeting, and also discuss a little bit what is interesting for you and how to contribute there. So, um, what do we have already? Are they, did they, is the concept more or less clear? <laughs> I will tell a little bit afterwards about how the how the process works in detail. Okay, so we have the expansion two. That is an expansion that defines the standard how wallets and apps communicate with each other. So everybody is able to uh, build an build a wallet, and as long as it's in line with the standard, um, all the apps that are also in line with the standard are working with this wallet. So I think quite a crucial one. Then we have the secret um, storage format um, that is basically a format when you as a user want to migrate from one wallet to another so you can um, migrate your keys and secrets and you can also the standard is open so you the wallets might also put other sensible information there they um, that can be then interpreted by by other wallets like meta info that is maybe sensible for the user and so on um, we have the expansion five because if you use multiple wallets it is usually a very bad idea to export the private keys and import them in another wallet because um, every new device you're using is a new attack vector so instead of that, we said, okay, people should be able to use multiple wallets on multiple devices, but they also should be able to communicate to each other and forward signing requests so that you have the really um, sensible information just in one place. Then um, 
We have a specification for deep links, again, uh, quite helpful. Um, so once you follow this format, the wallets should be also able to understand that they pick it up. We have a, um, for a specification for a data serialization format that is especially designed by um, people from, from AirGap. Alessandro was giving a talk here yesterday and um, for space efficiency. So if you have to communicate via QR codes or other very low band and other very low bandwidth environments, um, that is the way to go. Then there's something for message signing and that is maybe very interesting. There's expansion currently number nine that is about the token standard that Philip Pivovarsky and Milan mainly worked on. So that is what is there. Ready. This also about the key derivation. Again, this is for wallets. Interesting. And um, if you want to build a wallet, have a look there for sure. What's on our wish list? Um, non fungible tokens, of course. Um, I mean, this goes also a bit together with the planning in the core team. What will happen there about tokens? Then a universal metadata format. This is something if people maybe in the future want to build something like decentralized app stores. Currently, there's not a good standard on how the apps can communicate description, like some nice images and so on that empower in a, in a unified format that empowers people to do so. This is something the base app team already started working on. It's already a discussion in the forum also. Um, generalized accounts, a very nice feature from the uh, on the protocol level, and there there was an idea, maybe we can start looking into, maybe we can develop a standard to sign with IDs. Um, of course, multi-signature is a thing. And also what was um, mentioned earlier by Sergey, the um, polling and signaling app. Of course, it would be nice to have a standard so that we are in a later stage also able to process these results and smart contracts and uh, have a common ground for that. So not everybody has to develop the same thing from scratch again. Um, smart contract annotation format that would, for natural language, that would help people to explain a little bit what is happening here and there. And in theory also shows this to users once they do a certain um, transaction or call. Zero knowledge token transfer, I think, <laughs> nice thing, but that is probably a bit more in the future. And what we also want to do is um, some best practice guides. So not all the expansions are technical standards. Some of them are, have more an informational value. For example, um, we have in the protocol level Bitcoin NG implemented, and this could be a best practice guide for uh, developers how to handle the micro forks that are happening there from time to time. So that is, um, these are more like design and architecture guidelines that help uh, people to address these uh, special challenges of eternity. Same as for state channels, I think it's also quite um, complex technology and it would help a lot if we have some um, best practice guidelines there how to contribute, <laughs> that is the nice thing. So um, right now, the best thing is to start in the in the forum and this can also be just an idea as like things from the wish list or things you think are important. And um, from there, <clears throat> it is good then to get familiar with the first expansion that is about the process, how the expansions are governed right now. In general, Everybody can um, make a pull request with an expansion. Um, the author decides which changes get in or not. It has to fulfill some uh, formal uh, requirements about different sections. Um, check expansion one if you're more interested in this. We have some things that are so we started with this, like, I think, beginning of the year, maybe February, March. We already have some, some learnings from that. So in general, we see that um, 
since for an expansion to reach a certain state, you need a reference implementation that is, especially for small teams, it is, uh, it's a lot of effort to do such an expansion and it is good to find um, collaborators in the beginning so you can also share a little bit the, the workloads on that. And um, then doing the PRs in the expansion repo re uh, repository very early, even if you only have like a um, motivational part and the description and not the uh, complete specification yet, because they're just signaling to other people that you're already working on that. And uh, so they have the chance to join or get in touch with you. And uh, we avoid duplicate expansions because that we had met several times that they're coming in similar things. And um, one other thing, again, to avoid the duplicates, check a little bit what is already there before starting to write a new one. And that's it from my side. And now I would like to discuss a little bit um, about other ideas for expansions that are there, um, maybe here in the audience. Round of applause. <laughs> So, who has the first question? That's not everybody together, one by one. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. Right, there we go, Sergey. So just to like sum up extensions, is something like RFC or BIP from the Bitcoin world? Yes. Like the proposals? They're, they're, yes, so there can be, there are three different types. So there's a standard track that are more like that. There's an informational track that is more like the best practices and guides. And there's a meta track that is about more the processes around the application layer. So there can be also um, contradictory expansions, for example, that is okay. But are there like process which sets one to be like a canonical, like, like in, 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 in RFC world, you have a draft which people are working on and then yes. at some point they say, okay, this is the truth. So at the end, you don't have these contradictions. So it's just what. Yes, but we're a decentralized project. So <laughs> um, here it, it, it works a bit different. So you make a, make a first draft, then you go to review, then you start uh, at a reference implementation, and then you have a last a stage that's called last call. And then people can still add issues, and then it goes into final. And from there, the last stage is active. But of course, it also depends very much on how people are picking up your expansion and it's really used in the uh, uh, out there because you can't force anybody to do so. so. But it, it still reminds me of RFC because like yes. RFC is also quite decentralized. Yes. Yeah, you have this, and they have this very interesting process how they like agree whether RFC becomes like canonical it, it or not. It has a lot of similarities yeah. with, with the RFC processes. Any more questions? Yeah. Um, in regards to expansions and their relation to core development, how do they compare to features which should be governed by the community <clears throat> in the future? So everything that is not protocol related should go there. Everything that is touching the, the core protocol should uh, still be in the protocol repository. And so they are complementary. Yes. Oh, okay. One more. Maybe I have a proposition on <laughs> the expansion. <laughs> uh, version sure. negotiation uh, for the node API, for example, or something like that. The the API interface that all the compatible nodes have to implement. Okay, so because the SDKs and the, I mean the apps that are the main users of that anyway. Okay, so the um, uh, did I? I'm not sure if I understood this correctly. Like in an expansion that uh, defines an API interface of the of the node. So if we have other node implementations. They follow the same standard, and the SDKs is still <laughs> working. Yep. Right. Anyone? What kind of expansions would you like to see? In which direction? 
more on a technical side or more on a governance side I, or more on a protocol side, application side? What, 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 what do you expect people to I, I think right now we still have a lot of work to do on the on the technical side, but I personally would find also interesting if we um, have a more like these, these more informational guidelines there as we have now. So, okay. Yes. One more. It could be. So you mentioned um, the third type is best practices, right? Um, or something like that. So is there a website which then, you know, visualizes whatever comes out of an expansion or is it always kind of different um, depending on the topic of the best practice and informational <coughs> expansion? So right now our... Uh, Website is very simple. It is the GitHub repository and the README. We have already one uh, uh, pull request there from uh, Robert, uh, who's not here, I think, right now, which uh, creates a nicer README file. And I think it <laughs> quite helps already a lot to have a better overview. In the future, um, I think it makes sense to have a better, once there are more expansions, to have better systems to cluster them and a uh, better interface to to see what's going on. Any more? Okay, I'll ask one more because we need to pull some time a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, obviously you probably, because you do this, you probably know what BIPs are and EIPs are. So yes. which direction? I mean, BIPs are quite a big political thing, right? Let's be honest. The EIPs yes, are less... They also affect the, the protocol. Exactly. Right? The, the, that no, is it's a different question, different yeah. question. And the okay. EIPs, they're a less of a political thing, <coughs> even though they affect the protocol. Uh, would you want the IE expansions to go to be more of a the direction how it's done in Ethereum, the ERCs and the EIPs, or to would take the direction of the BIPs and you know to overgo a real difficult and complicated process of the community accepting, not accepting, playing ping pong with the core development team and so on and so on? Um, I think so for the expansion, it should stay on this application layer. Yeah, so um, I think we might have maybe at some point to think about if the governance process for the protocol doesn't work anymore, as it right now it works, um, then we have to, to think about other other things for the protocol repository. Yeah, but the expansions should stay on the application layer, and I think there should be also more freedom for different ideas and a bit uh, a run to... to awesome. Yeah. Any more questions? All right. Thank you, Ron. Applause. Thank you. Thank you.